Why did he do it? There are some who will tell us that, well, he had to, that somehow the father demanded his death in order to set us free from sin. Really? Does that make sense? Does that make any sense at all? If, as John tells us in his letter, that this is a God of love, why would he demand his son die to set us free? The same God who created the whole universe by a single word and made it happen. Let it be and it happened. Let it be and it happened. No, no. God could have forgiven us just by a single word. The thought that Jesus had to die in order to gain us his forgiveness, God's forgiveness makes no sense at all. It makes no sense at all. You know, this was the same God who, when Abraham went to sacrifice his son Isaac, stopped him. Why would he then demand that his own son die? It makes no sense. It makes no sense at all that somehow he had to do this. As we heard in the letter to the Philippians, though he was God, Jesus did not cling to that, but emptied himself out and became a human like us. A human like us in all things. And part of our human experience is suffering and death. He came to share our life completely. And he was willing to do that because... He was the very presence of God in this world. As he showed us on the cross, he is the very mercy of God in this world. The one who is hanging in pain and agony says, this day you will be with me in paradise. Who speaks words of forgiveness in the midst of his pain and suffering. Now, he came to share our humanity. He came to share all of our experience. He came to share our suffering and our pain. And he knew denial, and he knew rejection, and he knew injustice. He experienced it all. No, he came to share our humanity, but ultimately, that was not the reason why he died. There was another reason. I remember years ago, I was sitting in a reconciliation room in another parish, and we had a rather large crucifix on the wall, and it was a Saturday afternoon, and well, quite honestly, business was slow. <laughs> and so I just sat there, and I prayed for a while, and then I looked up at the cross that was hanging there. And I kept staring at it, and all of a sudden, it dawned on me that it wasn't the nails that held him to the cross. No, it was love. It was love. He was willing to suffer such excruciating pain to suffer betrayal, to suffer denial, to suffer rejection, to suffer all the mocking and the pain, to show us how much we are loved, to show us how much we are loved, that he was willing to pay everything for us. No, it was to reveal his love that he did it. You know, with little ones, sometimes you play the game, you know, how much do I love you? And then you open your arms like this and say, I love you this much, right? And isn't that what Jesus did? We ask, Lord Jesus, how much do you love us? And he opened his arms this wide and he said, I love you this much. And they nailed him to the cross. No, he said he loved us and then he died. And so why the nails? And yet, you know, when I looked at those nails on that day, it dawned on me that the nails were there to show us that those arms will never close. They are always open to everyone at all times. They are open in mercy and compassion and love so that all of us can find in his embrace the freedom the goodness, the love. He opened his arms and he said, I love you this much. And then he died.